We continue now at the top of Daf Lamed Amun Aleph and Maseches Gitin. This is Gitin Daf Thirty A. The Gemara continues with Rava's question. Rava asks as follows: Ki Mashvu Bezdin Shliach. When Bezdin appoints the second Shliach, this is talking about a scenario where Shliach needs to say B'fanei Nechta, B'fanei Nechtam. Then an onus happens and he's not able to deliver the get. So he said that he goes to Bezdin. He says B'fanei Nechta and B'fanei Nechtam in front of Bezdin, and then Bezdin appoints another Shliach. And so the question is: When Bezdin appoints that second Shliach, B'fanav Oshelo B'fanav, does it have to be in front of the? first shliach, or can it even be not in front of the first shliach? And the Gemara says, Hadar Pashta, then he answered the question, Bain B'fana, Bain Shalom B'fana, it doesn't matter, it can be in front of him, or it doesn't ha- or it doesn't have to be in front of him. Shalchu Mitam, and they sent a message from there, meaning from Eretz Yisrael, Bain B'fana, Bain Shalom B'fana, it doesn't matter if it's, fr- if it's in front of him, or not in front of him. And Rashi says, Ki Ma'ashu Bezen Shliach, Mi Boi B'fana, the Shliach Kama, does it need to be in front of the first shliach, or can it even not be in front of him? For example, in this case, this person is in a situation of onus. If he can't stay here and wait for them to appoint the second shliach, he has to go on his way. So is that okay? And again, the Gemara answers, it doesn't matter. It could be befanav or shalob befanav. And the Gemara continues with the two dots. There was a husband that said, if I don't come within 30 days, if I don't return, so then the get should be chal. Also, he came, Mupaske Mavra, but he was stopped by the ferry, meaning to say he got to the river, and the ferry was on the other side of the river, so he couldn't cross the river. Amar Luhu, so he said to them, he said to the people on the other side of the river, Chazu Dasoi, Chazu Dasoi, see that I'm coming, see that I'm coming, meaning to say, I'm trying to get here, but I'm not able to cross the river. Amar Shmuel, Shmuel said, Lo Shmei Masya, that's not called coming, he didn't make it to the other side of the river, so he didn't make it within the 30 days, and therefore the get is Chal. And the Gemara continues, There was a husband who said to them, If I don't appease her within 30 days, then the get should be chal. He went to appease her, but she was not appeased. Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef said, Did he give her a large vessel of dinar and v'loi faisa, and she wasn't appeased? We'll see Rashi in a moment. Iko Diamri, there are those that have a different version of what Rav Yosef said. Amr Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef said, Midi Tirkova de Dinari, boy Lamesavla. Does he have to give her a large vessel of Dinarim? Hapaisa, he tried to appease her, Veloifaisa, and she was not appeased. And the Gemara says, Hakaman Damar, Yeshonus Begitten, Hakaman Damar, Ainonus Begitten. One of the versions follows the one who says that there is a claim of Onus by Gitten, and the other one follows the one who says that there's no claim of Onus by Gitten. And Rashi explains, Mavra, Mavra, Hamayim, that's the river crossing, Shalom Matzis, he wasn't able to find the ferry, he wasn't able to cross the river, Loshme Masya, that's not called coming, the Lomati Arach, he didn't reach where he was supposed to reach, he didn't get here, the Ain Tainus Onus, but tonight get and he can't claim Onus over here, Lamemer Anisna, he can't say this was an Onus, really what happened was he did not make it, and he can't say an Onus prevented me from making it, the fact of the matter is the condition was fulfilled. Inami Yesh Onus Begit, and Rashi says it could be that really there is a claim of Onus by Gitten, how Kim the Bishmaita Kamais of the Ksubis, but we say in the first Sugi of Ksubis, the high owns of the Shriachu, that this is not really an onus. You can't really claim this as an onus, something out of your control, because something that it's something that's very common that you can't cross the river. The boy lay last new he should have made a specific condition about that, and since he didn't include it again, he didn't make it to where he was supposed to make it, and therefore the get is chal. And, the Gemara, and Rashi continues, La'avigita, the Gemara again said, that if I don't appease her within 30 days, it should be a get, me'achsha, meaning from now, amosr la'get al tanayzeh, emsor la'get al tanayzeh, lo ifay islam, giving her a get on this condition right now, if I don't appease her, it should be a get. Paisa bidvar and vihir bo'le'areim, so he tried to appease her with words, he brought his friends in, v'lon isratz to la'hashlamito, but she didn't agree, she was not appeased. And so in the first version of Yosef says, Did he give her a large vessel of the enormous and she wasn't appeased? And what Rav Yosef is saying is, since he didn't do that, at the end of the day, he didn't appease her. And therefore, since he did not appease her, the condition essentially has been fulfilled. And the get is chal. Now, even though he doesn't have that kind of money, he can't claim onus. According to this first version, a person is not able to claim an onus in terms of a tanai. He can't say, I didn't, fu- he, he can't say that the condition ended up being fu- fulfilled by onus, and so therefore, it is a get. 
Atu Tirkova the Dinari Bar Lemesavla. Then there was the second version of Rav Yosef. Does he have to give her a large, a large vessel of Dinarim? Varayenlo, but he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that money. The Onesu, and he's an Ones, and therefore he can claim Ones. The Apaisa Bemashu Biado Lasos. He tried to appease her with what was possible for him to do. Velo Apaisa, she wasn't appeased, and therefore he could claim Ones. Velo Havigita, and therefore it is not a get. The Yesh Ones Begitin, because he could have a claim of Ones by Gitin, meaning he could say the reason why this condition ended up being fulfilled was out of my control. It was an Ones and therefore that should not be considered a fulfillment of the condition, and it is not a get. And then again, that's what the Gemara explained. Hakaman to Amar, in the first version, that's going like the Man Damar, who says, Ain onus begitten, and the second version is, Yeh onus begitten, Plugsa de Trey Lishni, Ve'aliva de Ravahi, B'meseches Ksubas, V'shmaita Kamaisa. This is a, an argument of the two versions in the first in the first sugya of Meseches Ksubas. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Hamal Mo says, HaKohen V'salevi V'yasani, if somebody lends money to a Kohen, or a Levi, or an a poor person, Leos Mavrish Alain Mechalkan, in order to separate on that loan from their portion, meaning from the Trumor or Meiser that's supposed to go to them, and Rashi will explain. So Mavrish Alain Bechezka Shein Kayom, and he can separate on them with the Chazak, with the presumption that the Kohen, the Levi, the Oni are still alive. Veino Choshe Shema Mes, he doesn't need to be concerned. Shema Mes Kohen, maybe the Kohen died, or a Levi, or the Levi died. Oh, Hashirani, he doesn't need to be concerned that maybe the poor person became wealthy. Now, Mesu, if they do die, Tsarach Litol Rishos Ben Ayarshim, then he needs to get permission from the Yarshim, from the inheritors, to, to continue this arrangement. However, in Hilvon Bifnei Bezin, if this loan took place in front of the courts, Eino Tsarach Litol Rishos Ben Ayarshim, then he doesn't need to get permission from the Yarshim. And Rashi explains, Lihios Mavrish Alein Mechelkon, Hamalva Hazek, Kishayavris Trumos, of this Malva, when he separates his Truma, Yimchor HaTruma, he'll sell the Truma of Yaakov HaDamim Liatzmo, Bepiron HaChov Zeb, Bishvil HaKohen, he'll keep the money for himself as a payment for the loan on behalf of the Kohen. In other words, he lent the Kohen money, so now he sells the Truma that he separates and he keeps that money, and that will be the repayment of the loan. The same thing is true by Maiserishon of the Levi, Maiser Oni of the Oni. He just keeps that Maiser as a repayment of the loan. When it comes to Maisers, he actually can keep it and he can eat the Maisers. Maiser, Maiser can be eaten even by a non Levi or non Oni. The only thing he has to do is separate the Maiser from the Maiser, what we call Trumas Maiser. You take off Trumas Maiser from Maiser. That he gives to the Kohen. Shane Mutarim Lazarm, because the rest of it is Mutter to non Kohanim. And so, therefore, again, he'll keep the maestros as a repayment of the loan. Now, there's no stealing over here. He already gave the money as a loan to this Kohen or the Levi, etc. was the time of the loan. That's when they made this arrangement. Now, if the Kohen or the Levi or the Oni dies, then he has to get permission. He has to get permission from the Yarshin. Because they don't have an obligation to pay back this loan. So, he has to get permission from them. If they agree, if they want him to be able to collect the debt that he's owed, so then again, if they agree with this arrangement, he can hold the maestros, and that can be the repayment. Now, however, if this happened, the loan happened in front of Bezin, he doesn't need Rishos from the Yorshim. Bezin has the power to, to put this obligation upon the entire Kahuna, the whole tribe of Kahuna or Levia, because this is really to their benefit. Because of this Takana from Bezin, so now people are going to readily lend them money, so it's something ultimately for, for their benefit, and therefore he does not need to get Rishos for the, from the Yorshim if the loan took place in front of Bezdin. And the Gemara says, Again, the Mishnah said that if the person lends money to the Kohen or the Levi or the Oni, then he keeps for himself the Trumor, the Miser, as a repayment of the loan. And so the Gemara now says, even though it didn't come to his hand, and Rashi explains, It's sounds like the Mishnah is saying, he doesn't first give, let's say, the Trumor to the Kohen, and then the Kohen returns it to him. And the Mishnah simply says, he can separate that Trumor, and keep it for himself. So the question of the Gemara is, if it never got to the Kohen, how did this Kohen ever get this particular Truma? The Truma really can go to any Kohen. That now this person should be able to take the Truma back as part of the repayment of the obligation. Where is the Nesina over here? So again, the Gemara is saying, how could he just simply keep the Truma? And it's as if he's getting paid back from the Kohen. And the Gemara says, Rav says, We're talking about a situation 
situation of Makire Kahuna and Levia. Rashi says, Makire Kahuna Kamo Ishmeis Makaro means to say essentially this is a Kohen or a Levi who is his good friend. She Makira Vioav of Deno Rogel Loses Trumos and Maestros. He always gives his trumas and maestros to this particular Kohen, to this particular Levi, etc. Since it's so obvious that it's going to that Kohen, all other Kohanim, they don't pay any attention, they don't have any hope of getting that truma. It's as if it actually came to that Kohen or that Levi's hand, etc. That's what the Mishnah is talking about. That's the first answer of the Gemara, that's the answer of Rav. Shmuel Amr and Shmuel says, What's happening over here is he actually gives it to someone else and that person picks it up on behalf of the Kohen or the Levi, etc. through through the fact that it is a Zuchus. Rashi says, He gives it over to this individual and he says, Take this Meister and take it on behalf of the Levi and that's that's how the Levi will acquire it. It's as if it got to the Levi because this intermediary essentially is Zoche in it on behalf of the Levi, and then he gives it back. That's the second answer of the Gemara. That's the answer of Shmuel. And the third answer of the Gemara, Ula Amar Ula says, Hamani Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi who's the author of our Mishnah? It's Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi in general says, We can make someone who's not Zoche as if he was Zoche. And Rashi says, "Asu es sheino zocha kezocha b'mekomos harve mimnei takana asu kein l'rabiosi." There's a number of places where we find, according to Rabiosi, that we employ this principle. For example, b'hani zokin oni hamenakef barosh hazayis. Let's say a poor person is pruning at the top of the olive tree. Umetsudos chayos viofos umetsias cheresh. Other cases like that. So we say, even though the person was not zocha in all of these cases, and Rashi lists other cases, in all of these cases, we say, even though the person didn't make a formal kinyan, but Chazal have the ability to allow the person to own it even without making a formal Kenyan, and that's exactly what's happening over here. And the Gemara continues, Kulu kirav lo amri, the other Amoroim don't say like Rav, bimakire lo katani, because the Mishnah doesn't mention anything about makire kuhuna levia, that they're good friends. Kashmuel lo kamri, the other Amoroim don't say like Shmuel, bimizake lo katani, doesn't say anything about mizake in the Mishnah. And kuula nami lo amri, and the other Amoroim don't say like ula, ki yechida lo mokminam, because they don't want to say that the Mishnah follows just the opinion of one individual. And the Gemara continues, Tonu Rabbon and the rabbis taught. Hamal v'moz is a Kohen v'salevi v'asani, if somebody lends money to the Kohen levi and the Yoni, Leos mafresh alein mechelkan, again, that he's going to separate their portion and he's going to take it back for himself. The lender will take it back for himself as a payment. Mafresh alein bechezkas shehein kayamin. Number one, he's allowed to separate the trumor, the miser, etc. And the, with the presumption that these individuals, the Kohen, the levi and the Yoni are still alive. Uposek imahen kashar hazol, and he's also allowed to set the price. How much are we valuing this trumor? How much are we valuing this Meiser at? He's allowed to use, let's say the price goes down, he can use that lower price and therefore take for himself more Truma, more Meiser. Vien bo mishum ribis, there's also no issue of ribis over here. Vien shvias misham taso, also with this kind of a loan, shvias does not cancel the loan. All of these different all of these different items in this Brisa will be explained by the Gemara. Vien bo lachzer ain't ochozer, and if he wants to retract, he cannot retract. That line also will be explained by the Gemara. Nesiyayishu habaylim, now if the owners, if they give up hope on ever collecting back this loan, so then ain mafrashalim, then they're not allowed to separate. Let's say they give up hope on collecting truma, so then they can't later separate the truma and use it as collection. Lafisha ain mafrishan ala ovid, because something that's lost, you can't separate on something that is lost. And Rashi explains, Kashar Hazul, let's say it goes down, he can use the lower price. Shem Yuzluchitin Bishas Afrashas Trumas. Let's say at the time he's separating the Truma, and again he's keeping that Truma or the value of that Truma for himself as a repayment of the loan. Akablim Bioso Asha Shal Shas Afrasha. I want to evaluate the, the worth of that Chitin according to the cheaper amount. That way I'll be able to take more Chitin for myself as a repayment. The Ain Bo Mishom Ribis, and there's no issue of Ribis. Bishar Poskin, Bo Inon Ad Shiyetse Hashar, and other situations when you have cases like this, so you have to wait until the market value is until the market value is actually established in the marketplace. The Khan Posik Bashah Salva, but here, if he wants to, at the time of the loan, he doesn't have to wait for the market value to be established by the market. He can set the value at the time of the loan. He can say that we're doing this loan and the value, the amount that we're going to value this chitinet is is such and such. This is the value. And so therefore when I separate the truma later on, that's the value, that's the number we're going to use to determine how much chitin I can separate and keep for myself in order Order to repay the loan. Then it said that if he wants to retract, he can't. That's going to be explained later on. 
Then it said, Nisiyayishu habaylam, let's say the owners give up hope from collecting, kagon shelveyo kadei shir trumos shonazu. Let's say, for example, he gives them a loan, and he says it's about the amount that we usually separate in this year of truma, the amount of a year's separation of truma, that's what I'm lending you, ve'al menas l'kavlem v'shonazu. And the point is, this year I'll take the truma for myself, and that will be the repayment of the loan that I lend you that money. V'rosh and ishtad fusadosu. Then it turns out that all of his fields, they're not producing proper crops. V'nisiyayish me'osalva. And he gives up. He says there's no way he'll be able to collect the loan anymore. V'yamar v'aylech yisarn kiss. He says, woe is to me, I've lost money. V'yachrika chazru v'nisknu. And then something happens, and the crops do grow. And ma'afr shalem, at that point, once he gave up, he can't then separate the truma and keep it for a repayment of the loan. To yish davar ha'aviru. Because again, this is a case of giving up hope. That's considered lost, and therefore you can't do that. And the Gemara now continues and explains each line of the b'risa of the Tosef. To Amar Mar, the master said, posek imoam kashar hazul. He's allowed to go by the, by the lower amount. Let's say it lowers in value in the marketplace. He can use that value. And the Gemara says, Pshita isn't that obvious. The Gemara says, HaKamash Malan is coming to teach us. Afal pishalo pasak, kemisha pasak dami. Even though he didn't set this, even though they didn't make the arrangement in that fashion, it's as if they arranged it to be in that fashion. Rashi says, Posek imoam kashar hazul. Pshita b'chol tanai nami. In bo lifso kashar hazul miyim chibiyodo. By all conditions like this, if they want to set the price according to the cheaper uh, the cheaper market value, they can do that. Gabe shar pos kanal aperos nami. Hachitanya bezo neshech. That's what it says in Ezo Neshech, which, de- which deals with these kind of cases. Kemisha posak dami v'achi kamer hapisuk shu posak imon kashar hazul hu. Shem yuzlo adam alalu shu posak b'shas halvo yekavlem kashar hazul. What the Tosefta is saying is that the rate that they establish automatically is Kashar Hazul, that if it goes down again in value, that's going to be the rate, even though that's not explicitly what they set up in the contract. And the Gemara continues, V'ein bo mishum ribis, there's no issue of ribis. Again, that was the line in the Tosefta, and the Gemara says, my time, what's the reason why it's not a problem of ribis? Why is it not a problem of collecting interest? And the answer to that is, Kevon dechi lesle lo yoivle. The reason is, because since, let's say, there is no crop, so then he's not going to have to give him anything. He won't have to pay him back anything. So, kiisle nami ein bo mishum ribis. So if the crops do grow, if it's plentiful, so it's not going to be a problem of ribis, let's say he ends up getting back more than he lent out. And the Gemara continues, the Tosefta said, V'yen shviyas mesham tasu, the Shemitah year does not cancel this kind of loan. And the Gemara explains the lo karina be lo yigos, because when Shemitah cancels a loan, the Pasuk talks about the fact of lo yigos, that the Malv is not allowed to press the lova and collect his debt. But over here, there is no pressing the lova, there's no pressing the borrower, there's no collecting from the borrower, he's just taking from his own crops. That truma that he separated, he's taking it as a repayment of the loan, and since lo yigos does not apply, so to Shemitah does not cancel the loan. And the Gemara continues, the Tosefta said, It says if he wants to retract on this, so he's not allowed to retract. Amr Papa Papa says, What the Tosefta means to say is that the Balabayas is not allowed to retract. The Balabayas is the one who lent the money to the Kohen. He can't say, we're going back on the deal, I want the money back. But in terms of the Kohen to the Balabayas, if the Kohen wants to return the money and say he doesn't want this deal anymore, if he wants to retract, he is able to retract. The Tanan is we learned in the Mishnah, Nasan lo mos, if he gives him money, velo masha chaymenu, but he didn't do a Kenyan Meshicha, velo masha chaymenu peros, he didn't do a Kenyan Meshicha on the peros, he didn't pull the peros and make a physical Kenyan, so the giving of money alone, yachol achzabor, that's not a Kenyan, and he can still retract. So in this situation over here, the Balabayas is lending money to the Kohen, but essentially, one can view it as if the Balabayas is buying these fruits from the Kohen. And so therefore, all that happened is the money was given from the Balabayas to the Kohen. Now the Balabayas can't say, the Balabayas, he's not able to retract because there was nothing to do Mashiach on. He can't say, I didn't yet do Mashiach, and therefore I want to be able to retract. The Balabayas can't do that. But the Kohen can say, from his point of view, the Kohen can say, all that happened here is I've received some money, but there was no Mashiach, and therefore I'm still able to retract. And Rashi explains first in terms of Shemitah canceling the loan, Lo Karina Be Lo Yigos, we don't apply the Pasuk of Lo Yigos, Sheno Yachal Latovo Klum, because in this case the lender really can't claim anything from the borrower. The deal was that the lender is taking his repayment from his own crops, which he separates that Shruma or that Meister, that's what he's taking, taking there is no other claim that can be made against the Lova. Balabayas, again, we said that the Balabayas in Bolachs or Bakoin, if the Balabayas wants to retract and say, give me back the money, I don't want this deal, Ain Yachal, he can't do that. Shere Kasba Biyadu, he's given the money already away to the Kohen. There was nothing really to do Mashiach on. To say, I didn't do Mashiach. There's nothing to do Mashiach on. There is no Truma yet. But the Kohen, the one who is borrowing the money, he can retract. Because since they made him as if he was a Zoha, he could say, You didn't have to do any Mashiach from me, these Peros. You never acquired the Peros yet. And therefore, as far as I am concerned, I can go back on this deal.
And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Tosefta above said, Nisiyayishu if the Bailam give up hope, again, a situation where the field doesn't seem to be producing any crop, ain ma'afashalein, so then they can't separate that shroom and use that and collect that as the repayment of the loan. Lefisha ain ma'afrish, and I love it, because that's already considered a lost situation. It's considered as if he gave up hope, and therefore you can't separate and use that to collect in such a situation. And the Gemara says, Pshita isn't that obvious. So the Gemara says, Lo, no, it's not obvious. Strich, it's needed in the following situation. Da Akun, that it did produce some kind of a stem, and so therefore there was some growth. Ma'u de Tema Aknasa Milsi, I might think that that growth is considered something. It's not considered really Avud, it's not totally lost. Kamash Malan, that's what it's teaching us. It's considered to be totally lost. Rashi explains, Lo, Strich, Da Akun, Bashosha, Yavshu, when these crops dried out, Venisiyash, and he gave up hope. Kvarola Bakana, there was already something growing on the stem. Ma'u de Tema Aknasa Milsi, the in such a situation, even though it dried out, sometimes it fixes itself. It's not so common that it's going to be totally destroyed. Maybe that yish is not a real yish, it's not a real giving up of hope. That's what it's teaching us, that's what the Tosefta is teaching us, that it's considered a yish. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Tanya, we learned in a Brisa. Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, Omer Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov says, Hamal vemos es a Kohen ves a Levi bebezin. If somebody lends money to a Kohen or a Levi, and here the Brisa is talking about a case in Bezdin. The Mishnah at the end of the Mishnah also discussed a case where it was in Bezdin. Umesu, and then they die, meaning to say the Kohen or the Levi dies. So how are you going to separate the Truma and the Meiser and take that as a repayment if the Kohen and the Levi aren't even alive to really be Zoha in that Truma and Meiser that you can then take it back from them? So so Rabbi Lezer ben Yaakov says he can still separate and use that as the repayment and it's a presumption of the Shevet itself. It's as if the Shevet, so to speak, owes him the money and he can separate and keep that as a repayment of the loan. And the Brisa continues, Vesa Ani Bebezin, let's say he lends the poor person again a loan in Bezdin, Vames, and the poor person dies. Ma'afrashola Bechezkas Ani Yisrael, similar idea, he can separate the Maeser Ani and under the presumption that he's owed by the Aniyah Yisrael in general, by the poor people of Klal Yisrael in general. Rav Achi Omer, Rav Achi says, Becheskas Aniyah Olam, not the Aniyah Yisrael, but he says the Aniyah Olam, the Aniyah of the world. And the Gemara asks, My Benayu, what's the difference between Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, who says, Becheskas Aniyah Yisrael, and Rav Achi, who says, Becheskas Aniyah Olam. And Rashi explains, Oso Hashavit, again, when it's the Kohen or the Levi that dies, then he's... Then he separates Becheskas Oso Ashevet Shakar of Lem, but Oso Ashevet, meaning whoever is the closest relative to them in that tribe, Roy Liyarsham, that person is fit to inherit them. V'chol of him Zochre Maestros, all of him are Zochre Maestros, Lofika Chiakev Zesa Maestros, Beshvil Akar of Lem Belavia. So therefore he says, this lender can hold the Maestro for himself as a repayment for whichever relative is closest in Shevet Levi. And Becheskas Aniyah Yisrael, when it comes to the poor person that he lent money to, he can do it Becheskas Aniyah Yisrael. Hachal Lekel Memer Becheskas Yorshin. Shema Yorshim Ashirim him. Here Rashi says you can't say it's a chazak of his of those who inherit him, this poor person, because maybe those who inherit him are actually wealthy, they're not poor. The truth of the matter is some of the Mefarshim ask on Rashi, it could be also by Kohen and Levi. The people that are inheriting the Kohen and the Levi are not actually Kohanim and Leviim. That's a general question on Rashi that they discuss. Avul Becheska Shar Aniyim Yafresh, but in any case Rashi continues, but he does it as a chazak of other Aniyim. Viyakvim, and he uses that, he holds that back, he keeps that as a repayment of the loan. The Hoel Vitakonas Aniyim. And Rashi explains the reason. This is really all for the benefit of the Aniyim. It's good for Aniyim that this is the way they can that people can be repaid when they lend money to Aniyim. That way people will be willing to lend money to Aniyim. So this really is all for the benefit of the Aniyim. They'll get loans when they need. Therefore, when he's collecting from other Aniyim, he's not stealing from those Aniyim because overall, this is a Takana, this is for the benefit of the Aniyim and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Lamid Omid Base.